Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Developing T. Reads Highway Blossoms by Studio Elon. This kinetic novel ha- was part of Humble Bundle's bundle for racial justice and equality. It also contains strong language, sexual themes, and deals with loss and grieving. If you're not in a headspace to handle these topics, please consider skipping this video. Now without further ado, let's get started. I wake up slowly fighting to keep my eyes open in the back of my head. I feel like something is wrong. It takes a minute before I realize I've overslept. It's a quarter to six. Marina was supposed to wake me up 15 minutes ago. Marina? I call her name but get no response. Rolling out of bed, I massage my eyes and stumble up towards the front. Of course she's asleep, sprawled out on the dash with her head buried in her arms. It looks like she's been out for a while. Jerking her head by the shoulder, I shake her awake. Uh, what's up, Amber? Her speech is slurred by sleepiness. I ignore the temptation to make the not-you joke. <sighs> How's that book you're reading? It's great. I just put it down, to. A look of shock spreads across her face. Mounting horror takes over as she realizes the time. Oh god, I'm so so sorry. I was just gonna nap, but then I forgot to set an alarm. I mean, to wake me up. Yeah, that's what alarms are for. Freaking out, she hurriedly tries to buckle her seatbelt, failing several times in her frenzy. I pat her on the shoulder as I sit down. It's not even a pig teal, but she's so worked up. It's cool. We're not late yet. Ready to go? Marina just nods, staring at the floor. I buckle up and turn the key. The engine roars to life and I throw it in reverse. I have to crane my neck to make sure I don't run over anyone. Road signs direct us out of town towards the canyon. After spending so long on the highway, going down these streets with lower speed limits feels restrictive. From the corner of my eye, I watch Marina. She's been abnormally quiet. She fixes her hair, pops her knuckles, and rubs her shoulders, but she doesn't say anything. Finally, I cave. What's wrong with you? Huh? What do you mean? Her tone of voice is stressed. Maybe I'm more intimidating than I think. You're being weird. Super quiet. Oh, um... Um... I didn't know if you were mad at me or not. What? For falling asleep? She nods. <clears throat> nah, I'm not mad. Trust me, you'd know for sure if I was. I told you it wasn't a big deal, didn't I? You promise? Yeah, I promise. This girl has a lot of hidden trauma. Marina bounces in her seat, immediately cheerier. Okay, cool. Cause like, if you were mad at me already, that would be a bad sign. Sign of what? That we wouldn't be good partners. You know, treasure hunting buddies? Oh, we're partners now, are we? You're the sidekick, right? No way. I'm totally the main character. We're here because of me. I laugh, causing her to turn away smiling. She's a lot cuter when she smiles. I've been smiling more too, I realize. As I think that, it starts to make me sad again. Do I really deserve to be smiling right now? Hey, Amber? Huh. Like she read my mind, Marina snaps me out of it. Can we listen to Super Crush again? You seriously like that one? Super Crush was one of the those groups that Grants loved to show off to other people. <clears throat> because they were so weird. All the members played a different instrument on each album, so it was like a whole other band every time. Yeah, it was different, but in a good way. That's definitely true. With one hand on the steering wheel, I dig around in the bin of tapes by my feet. I flick my gaze between that and the road. Eventually, I find the one I'm looking for. It has a Halloween orange case with text that looks like slime. 
When it starts to play, Marina hums along. She's almost on key. Guess she liked it enough to remember how the song goes. I crank the volume up, earning a grin from Marina. The sound is tinny and distorted at this level. More distorted than usual, I mean. But it's also more fun. Our smiles last all the way until we roll into a nearly empty parking lot. As I turn the volume back down, I can tell she's thinking the same thing. Amber? Yeah? Shouldn't there be, like, other people waiting here? <clears throat> mm, there probably should. What time is it? Marina twists around the, to check. Uh, 6.20? What the hell? Did they start early? There are other cars around, but they're all unoccupied. My parking job is hasty, and I take up two spaces, but don't bother to correct it. We hurry out of the RV. I almost forget the key in the ignition and have to double back to grab it. Marina's already o over at an information desk, probably talking to a ranger. But then she turns back to me, the despair on her face visible even though it's getting dark. There's no one here! There aren't any lights on inside either. Probably closed at six. I vaguely recall reading that in a brochure, but I thought there would be someone there around for the tours. Don't panic! I jog back to the RV and unlock it again. Rummaging through the glove box, I pull out the little blue flashlight that Gramps gave me a few years ago. I click it on and off a couple of times to make sure it works. After I lock everything back up, I join Marina by the unhelpful help desk. She's bouncing on her heels, hands clasped together. Hey, it's alright. Worst comes to worst, we'll just do it tomorrow. But what if someone else finds the treasure tonight? I don't have to answer that for... I don't have an answer for that one. Guess we'll just have to catch up then, huh? Turning on the flashlight, I swing the beam around. While there's still one daylight left... <laughs> While there's still one daylight left... It isn't much... Le it isn't much. Maybe half an hour at the most. Catch up to what? The tour group, silly. Even if we're late, they can't have left that long ago. And they'll be stopping a bunch, so we should be able to find them easily. By ourselves? Her voice is almost a squawk, like a surprised parrot. Well, yeah. I don't see anyone else around. Do you? I swivel around, illuminating nothing but rocks and bushes. Come on, it'll be fine. It's not like there are going to be bears or mountain lions this close to a parking lot. <clears throat> Those kinds of things live here? Oh, you have no idea. We haven't even touched on the scorpions or the snakes. If she didn't know that, then what would, is she afraid of? Probably. I don't know. But come on, we're wasting time. Marina whis whimpers. Then, surprising me, she grabs my hand. Hers is sweaty and warm. I turn and look at her and meet her wide eyes. It looks like she might cry. It makes me regret being so pushy. We don't have to do it if you don't want to. She shakes her head but clings to me like a kid, her free hand buried in my clothes. If it were any brighter out, she'd see my face turn red. No, like I said, if we don't go now, someone else will beat us to it. Just stay close, okay? Yeah, of course. She lets me lead, but doesn't let go of my hand. A large wooden sign marks the start of the trail. So, uh, are you scared of the dark? <clears throat> you weren't scared of it last night. No answer. But you were fine at Shiprock. That was different! Marina's arm jerks, but she doesn't let go. That was in a town! With people! And roads! And no mountain lions! The temptation to tease her more is strong, but I don't. Every time a bird caws or something makes the brush shake, I feel her clinch, clinch a little. Somehow, even the sight of her is cute too. A little childish, sure, but... It's nice to have her rely on me to keep her safe. To take her mind off things, I make small talk. So, what are you going to do once you're filthy rich from the treasure? Sorry, what? I asked what you'll do with your share of the treasure. Oh, um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't thought about it. We're out here looking and you don't even have a plan for it? 
it was a spur of the moment thing. What about you, huh? I don't know either. Ha! Huh. See, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't planning on looking for it, you know? I haven't spent as much time thinking about it. I glance behind me to see Marina stick out her tongue. I laugh. <clears throat> I clear my throat. I drink some water. But, uh, let's see. I definitely need to pay off Gramps' hospital and funeral expenses. After that, I guess I should probably get the motorhome fixed up. It's not going to break down on us or anything, but it's kind of old. Why not just buy a new one? Because it's Gramps. Hell no! My response comes out snappier than I intended. It's just that it has sentimental value, you know? I'd rather keep that than buy a newer, better car. I grew up in that thing. I could never just replace it. After that, I'd probably just keep doing what I was doing before I met you. And what's that? Wandering. Don't you want to stop wandering sometime? My step slows a bit. It's an innocent question, but it hits me hard. Not yet, no. I whisper it. Marina catches up next to me, dropping my hand so sh as she does so. At least I'm not the only one without a goal. I poke her in the side and she scrums away a couple feet. Ow! Torque. It's hard to stay sad around her. As we turn around a curve in the road, the tour group comes into view. Just ahead is a cluster of people, most of them armed with flashlights. It's hard to know for sure, but I can see at least a dozen different figures. The tour guide is shining his light up at the rock face, illuminating some designs on it. Everyone has their backs to us. Try to be as sneaky as possible. We want to join up without them noticing, like we've been there the whole time. If anyone notices us show up, they might notice when we leave. Why do we have to join up in the first place? I don't know how to get to the ruins we're looking for. We'll stay with the group until the tour gets there, and then we'll sneak off. Marina nods. Okay, follow my lead. And remember, be as quiet as you can. We creep forward slowly. If someone were to turn around and see us, we'd look pretty suspicious. But nobody does. The lecture on the petroglyphs gets their full attention. Marina kicks a rock and I tense up, expecting that to break the spell. But we're close enough now that if it did, it might not matter. And we reach the back of the tour group without anyone noticing. I give Marina a thumbs up, which she returns. You're right, you can see the Anasazi ruins. Some of the Navajo people still call the area home. There's a living community in the canyon who... I'm not too interested in hearing about the history of the place, so I turn back to Marina. She's looking up at the pictures too, though her eyes appear glazed over. When she catches me staring, she blinks and then smiles. I smile back, though I must look like an idiot for watching her instead of the lecture. After a minute, the guide speech concludes and we start to walk down the trail. Much to my dismay, before I can say anything to Marina, the woman in front of us turns around. Isn't that just crazy? <clears throat> Huh? It takes a second for me to understand that she's talking to me. She fits just about every stereotype of redneck from the huge hat on her head to the baby strapped to her chest. What? What about that is redneck? Who wrote this? She'd probably be attractive if not for the layers of sunscreen coating her face. Even though it's nearly nighttime, they make her look like a ghost. I said, isn't that just crazy? What he was saying about those Indians and how they used to communicate with each other. Oh, yeah. Even if I had wanted to talk to her, I still have no idea what the guide had said. They were just so darn clever. Really makes you wonder how they all ended up dying out, huh? No, I don't wonder. I, I kind of know. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of them are still alive. And, like, <clears throat> some of them live here. 
in this canyon. I had heard that much at least, but apparently not everyone did. For a second when the woman looks at me like I'm crazy, but then she busts up laughing. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you're absolutely right. I was thinking of them Aztecs down in Mexico. Her laugh is more like a bray. She sounds like a farm animal. In my head, I keep hoping she'll turn back around and leave us alone. But we're not so lucky. She keeps on chatting us up as we follow the trail. I'm self-conscious about how noisy she's being compared to how low noise level of the others. Say, is that where the name Texas comes from? From Aztec? No. Before I could answer, she started shouting at someone else. Howard! Hey, Howard! Come over here! Oh, Jesus. By now, nearly everyone is looking at us. Ma'am, can you please keep your voice down? Oops, sorry. <laughs> she apologizes. Loudly. So much for staying inconspicuous. Howard makes his way over. He looks rather defeated, face dropping, face drooping and shoulders sagging. I figure he's the woman's husband. Yes, dear. The poor man. I was just talking to this girl here about history. And I was wondering, does the name Texas have anything to do with the Aztecs? No. Since the words sound kind of similar? <sighs> I don't think so. Huh, go figure. <laughs> She cackles again. Beside her, Howard sighs. For his sake, I hope her family is loaded or something. Every time she laughs, the baby on her chest bounces. But the lucky kid sleeps right through it all. Maybe he's used to this. Anyway, I must have left my manners back.